Okay, this is my first time using my pen to answer these questions, so please bear with my lovely handwriting. This is projectile motion, June 2016. We're going to have a look at what this ball is up to. Ball A is projected vertically upwards from the ground. So here's ball A projected vertically upwards from the ground near a tall building with a speed of 30 meters per second. Ignore the effects of air friction. Explain what is meant by a projectile. We know we can answer that. We have the definition, something that's only affected by gravity. So here it says to you, calculate the total time that ball A will be in the air. So what you can see is ball A went up and then it went down, okay? So to calculate the total time that ball A is in the air, it's from the time it leaves the ground to the time it returns to the ground. Now remember we have symmetry of motion. So in this flight, my VI is going to be 30, okay? Remember we must always say, we pick a direction, I'm going to say up is positive. My initial velocity is 30. Remember we have symmetry of motion. So when the ball hits the ground, its final velocity will be the same magnitude, 30, but in the opposite direction. So from there, it's quite easy to calculate the total time ball will be in the air. We just say VF equals VI plus A delta T. And of course, we know A for any projectile is 9.8. And if we said up is positive, it becomes negative 9.8. So my final velocity is downwards. So it is negative 30. My initial velocity was upwards. It is positive 30 plus negative 9.8 times delta T. So then by algebra, negative 60 equals negative 9.8 delta t. So delta t, the time for the whole flight, is going to be 6,12 seconds if you apply your calculator to this question. So we can define projectile. We can find the total time ball A is in the air. Now it says to you, calculate the distance traveled by ball A during the last second of its fall. If you look in the memo, there's a million different ways to answer this. But to me, the, the very easiest is to consider this whole symmetry of motion thing. So if you have a look here, in your science clinic, there is a picture like this, okay? And this picture tells you about what is going on with the ball. And it tells you, if you can understand all of the code here, that you learn that the time, this time upwards, is equal to this time downwards, okay? You learn that over here, the V equals zero. For this particular ball, if this ball left at 30, it returned at negative 30, okay? But the whole deal here is, let's find a different pen color. The whole deal here is, if you slice through this ball's motion at any point, Whatever the magnitude of the velocity is here, it will be the same velocity in the opposite direction on that side. If you were to check for this time t, say this, let's call this t1, this will be exactly the same as t1. If you were to look at the delta y for this t1, it will be the same as the delta y, but in the opposite direction here. So when this question says to you, find in the last second of motion, if I redraw this curve, we are interested in this one second of time here. But the whole thing is that last one second is equal to the first one second. So however far the ball traveled here is however far the ball travels there. So this is by far the easiest way to solve this but it is the last solution in the memo. Okay, so let's have a look here. Let's try and solve it that way. So if we go 3.2.2, our initial velocity is going to be 30. Our delta T is going to be one because it said the last second of motion, which is the same as the first second of motion. My A is negative 9.8 
and we can work this out with delta y because that's what we're looking for is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. But before we go racing off with that, we should have stated why we can do this. You have to say motion in motion is the same in first second as in last second. Okay, so make sure you show your reasoning, otherwise people do not like to give you marks. So our initial VI was 30, delta T was 1. We said uh, up is positive, so this becomes plus a half of negative 9.8 times 1 squared. And then you end up with 30 minus 4.9. Okay, from this, yeah, because a half of 9.8 is 4.9. 30 minus 4.9, so delta y equals 25,1 meters. If you were to go look in the memo, what they do is they do um, the first option here says to you, okay, we can consider here to be vi, and this is going to be zero because it's at maximum height. Then in the memo, it says the time that the ball is in the air is this time, okay, 6,12. So half of 6,12 is 3,06, okay. So time, the time from here to here will be 3,06 seconds. But in actual fact, the ball is only going to be traveling 2,06 seconds, okay, because the last second is not counted. And then what you do is you say, okay, this is my VI is zero, and you find VF over there, and then you use VF and a delta T of one second to solve this. But I mean, it's like really complicated, and you end up with basically the same answer. So to me, this is by far the easiest using symmetry of motion. Okay, so just use symmetry of motion, first second equals last second. Now it says to you, two seconds after ball A is projected upwards, ball B, two seconds after ball A goes up, ball B goes up from the roof of the building. The roof of the building is 50 meters above the ground. Both balls A and B reach the ground at the same time. So this ball, always draw the diagram, is going to do this, and then they're going to land at the same time, okay? But it says to you two seconds afterwards. So for ball B, the total travel time is going to be the time for ball A. Subtract two seconds. Okay. So ball B is only going to travel for 4,12 seconds. So both balls A and B reach the ground at the same time. Refer to the diagram. Ignore the effects of air friction. Calculate the speed with which ball B was projected upwards from the roof. So we need to find for ball B, VI. Now how far is ball B going to displace? Ball B is going to displace 50 meters in the negative direction. Because we said up is positive, do you agree? So if up is positive, ball B is going to end up on the ground. So this is negative 50, is my delta Y. And because it's displacement, we just ignore everything that it did up top there. Displacement is just how far from start to finish. So, if we have a look here, we are going to then look at, we have to find, what do we have to find? The speed with which it was projected upwards. We need VI. So, we know um, delta y, negative 50. We know delta t is 4,12. So you can say here, now this handwriting is going to get very bad. Delta x equals vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. And if you substitute in there, making sure that the delta x or the delta y is negative 50, we need to find VI, it is multiplied by 4,12, and then this is going to be plus a half 
of negative 9.8 times 4.12 squared. And if you do some interesting stuff with your calculator, you should end up, depending on how far you rounded, I kept two decimal places. I got 8,07, the memo says 8,05 meters per second. So 8,05 meters per second to hit the ground. So now it says to you, sketch the velocity time graphs for the motion of both balls A and B on the same axes. Clearly label the graphs for A and B. Then it says to you, the time taken for both balls A and B to reach the ground. So this one is what we need. This one is what we need. Okay. And then it says the time taken by ball A to reach maximum height. So this was ball A's travel. So maximum height is half of this. Okay. 6.12 divided by 2, which is 3,08. Okay. So if we go and draw this on the graph, so 3,08, 3,06. Yes, 3,06, sorry. If we were to go and draw this, let's have a look and on some axes. It said to you a velocity time graph, okay? So this is going to be velocity in meters per second, and this is going to be time in seconds. We need to first put in the values, okay? So here is zero. And at two seconds is when the first ball was launched. So we need to know, I mean, the second ball was launched, ball B. And then at over here was time to maximum height, 3,06. And then both of them hit the ground at 6,12. So those are the times we put in. Okay. And both balls must stop at 6,12. And remember, both balls were traveling downwards. So if we said up is positive, because our graph should be labeled as well with that. If we said up is positive, then um, it's going to be below the curve when they hit the ground because the velocity is negative. So if we look back at the question, ball A was launched with a velocity of 30. So at maximum height, the velocity is zero. So the ball must go from here down through 3,06, because that's when velocity is zero, down to 6,12. That is when it hits the ground. Okay, so that's ball A. And then remember, ball B was red. Ball B, we checked what velocity did it leave. We had to calculate the velocity ball B left with. We, what was ball B's initial velocity? 8,05. So we go back here to this graph. And somewhere over here, this is ball B, 8,05. Okay, it started at 2 seconds. And remember, the curve is going to be parallel. Okay. Oopsie. So ball B is going to travel parallel to this. Because why is it parallel? It has exactly the same uh, acceleration because it's a projectile. And it is going to travel downwards here. And this is why I tried to scroll here because I haven't drawn this lovely. It's going to end up here and it is going to stop at 6,12. So let's zoom this a little bit smaller. Okay, so can you see here, assuming you drew this with a ruler, yes. I wasn't ready to um, draw the line in. These are the important things. Up is positive, so the graph has a steady gradient because it has the fixed acceleration of negative 9.8. The two balls have the same acceleration, so the lines are parallel. Here is the initial velocity of ball B. Okay. And there is ball A over here, which left at 30 meters per second, reached maximum height at 3,06 and hit the ground at 6,12. And ball B also hit the ground at 6,12. And the most important things here are the 3,06, 6,12, and then those values on the other axis. And that, I do believe, is the end of the question.